Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone, to the Board Game Design Hour, uh, Variety Hour. <laughs> I'm your host, Matthew Dunstan. Hope you're all well. How, how is everyone doing today? Uh, it is uh, Friday, the 2nd of April, uh, past the dreaded April Fools. <laughs> Hope everyone got through that OK, I must say. I, uh, I don't think I got particularly tricked by anything, thank thankfully, but <laughs> it was a bit close uh, with one or two things. Uh, of course, the, the one thing that I was most hopeful about was uh, Eurovision uh, announced a winter vision, a special <laughs> winter vision with my favorite act, Kano, uh, headlining from Norway. And, and that was, I think I wanted that, I just wanted that to be true, even though I knew that it, it would not. Afternoon, Rob, how are you going? Uh, but yes, hope hope you are all well. Hope this hope finds well. After it being this sort of nice sunny middle of the week when you know couldn't go out or anything, it's now back to being quite cloudy all day and a bit colder. So it's uh, it's a bit up and down here in Prague, but I hope, I hope wherever you are, it's not too bad. <laughs> CERN announced a vertical particle accelerator. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, yeah, it's it's funny how these things work out. But uh, yeah, so. End of the week, as 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 always. I hope hope uh, yeah the working week has gone well uh, for me. Uh, hasn't been too bad, although I must say it's been quite a few meetings. Uh, you know, um, so, some good, some bad. Uh, one one meeting for my real work that wanted me to like you know scream into the void yesterday, which was which was always fun. <laughs> um, but then I could uh, catch up with um, Theo Theo Rivera. Um, who's been on, on the channel before. We we're working on uh, this children's game together and uh, we we're able to chat about that. So that, that definitely got my, my spirits back up, which is which is always nice. I just realized I have forgotten to tweet out and put on Facebook that I am on Twitch. So I shall do that. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I'm still kind of slowly getting back at the streaming thing. So uh, I'm not sure how full on today is gonna be. Uh, but uh, I thought I'd chat a little bit about rules writing, mainly because I really wanted to try and write a, a set of rules today, and I haven't yet, and I thought maybe I could try and do a little bit on stream, uh, and that might um, get me get me going, uh, and you know, I can chat a little bit about how I approach writing rules at the same time uh, for those who might be interested. Um, so yeah, it's, it's probably going to be a bit more nice. Um, maybe we might play some Luck Be a Landlord um, with the... Uh, hey, hey, Jay, how you going? With the new patch, uh, like with the time zone different changes, actually the patch goes live in only an hour, I think. So it's a little, it could fit a bit more into into the stream. So that might uh, might happen a little bit later. Um, yeah, nothing, no, not a whole lot of uh, sort of game design news. Uh, I met with one of my mentees today. Uh, we haven't, I haven't met either of my mentees for a few weeks, mainly because I was I was a bit under the weather, obviously. Um, but we caught up today, and that was that was really good um, just to catch up on that. Um, I uh, had a few, haven't uh, got, you know, got some feedback from a publisher rejecting a prototype, which is which is fine, kind of normal thing. But actually, they, they played us the prototype very quickly, kind of within two weeks of, of me submitting them a print and play, you know, so they, they really quickly, um, you know, played the game, which was really great and actually gave, uh, you know, a really great set of feedback. So I'm, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's all you're, you're looking for, really, like, um, in a way, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's quite rare that you will, like, sell a game out of nowhere, but um, it uh, you know the the second best thing is to for it to be play test quickly to get feedback quickly and, and like good feedback, quite extensive feedback that you um, you know we don't I'm not sure if we know exactly which direction we want to go with the game, but I think it points out some some clear you know problems or um, not necessarily like problems with with how the game plays exactly, but you know w what audience is it for. Um, I think a problem that that some of my games can fall into quite easily it falls between sort of a, like a family gateway game and a, a slightly more expert like gamer game and you don't want to fall in between those because uh then you then you don't have any audience at all which is which is not so great but uh yeah so so that was really good to get some feedback um more meetings about the adventure games and various things um but yeah just sort of like pushing on with with, with various various projects trying to at least and yeah, but also trying to take a break because you know it's Easter, um, technically like I guess a public holiday today. But I'm streaming, I'm playtesting tomorrow, so it you know it, it never stops. But um, but it's it's a good bit of fun uh, anyway. So uh, yeah, I mean I guess let's let's chat a little bit about rules writing. I can share. I should share my screen, which has the 
uh, documents, or I could do that application window even. Uh, so yeah, this um, I've been working on a game that's sort of based on like auto battlers, auto chess, uh, and uh, I need to write the rules for it uh, because I haven't for a while. Uh, and and actually, this is kind of like this is actually a template that uh, I originally got from Brett Gilbert. Uh, he made this template, and I've essentially you know uh, bastardized it for every subsequent rule set that I do, even even for myself, um, which which works pretty well. Um, and yeah, I've I've started. I've all I've done so far are the components, uh, which is good. But it it sort of just has like a few general sections, um, you know that that you know I think. The nice thing about rules, of course, is that they have generally the same, you know, format no matter what you're doing. Um, you know, you've got your components, got setup, aim of a game, which, which to be honest, in prototype uh, components isn't um, isn't it's not so important for prototypes. Usually, it's like a very short section. Um, the how to play, and this is where you really get into the rules. Uh, then you can have like sections within the how to play, uh, depending on like what what exactly you're doing. Uh, and then you have end of the game, like how does the game end? You know, how is victory determined, and things like that. Um, and the nice thing also is there's like a, this automatic like uh, footer which has like a date, so you've got the version and the date, um, and you've got your email address, which is just uh, one of those things that you can sort of forget sometimes. Um, you know, when submitting your game, yeah, you really want your email address there somewhere with the rules, so it's easy for for someone to um, yeah to get back in in contact with you. Uh, so. Yeah, so the thing is, of course, um, oh, Rob, Rob was saying something. I don't know if you've seen it, but Anne Jones, Cards or Die, has made the rule book toolkit, which is essentially a training course for writing. I have not seen it. I shall have a look. The rule book toolkit. Um, and what? Uh, oh, here we go. Thank you. So that's the link there. Uh, can I actually have to go into here to copy it? I think or to get it. So I will share it with the screen. So this is the rule book toolkit. Um, Oh, great. So there's a lot of different sort of sections. OK, so so Rob proofread the, the written materials. And yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty well. I mean, it's pretty reasonably priced, 25 pounds, not too bad. Uh, you've got the what. There's a video, what and the why, introduction, uh, why the rulebook's important, creating a rulebook, clarifying gameplay, inclusivity, audience and inclusivity. Uh, consistently layout, testing accuracy. Yeah, wow, it looks very, yeah, it looks looks very, um, very. What's the word? Very um, uh, comprehensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. Thanks, Rob. Um, so, but I will go back to. Oh gosh. Keep switching between these. Uh. Yeah, so the interesting thing is that I guess I'm not I'm not going to sort of go through explaining the game so much because uh, it's not really the point, and and hopefully it'll come through through talking about uh, the rules. Um, oh gosh, no, I've lost it. Hold on. Um, basically, it's a card game uh, fundamentally, uh, so it makes things like uh, setup pretty easy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, actually, <laughs> I've just realized, I just had a look. I need to actually update something else with the game first. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a good, good amount of preparation <laughs> for, no, I've just realized that I have, there's a different problem that I have to fix because if I don't fix the language with how this has worked, then the rules are not gonna make sense. So yeah, I've realized I actually have to fix some language on cards first. So that's gonna change what today's stream uh, might might be about, really. Um, yeah, it's uh, okay. <laughs> so talk amongst yourself. Uh, maybe it's gonna be a little bit more relaxed 
kind of chat today. Uh, if people got questions, uh, I thought I was prepared, but uh, yeah, apologies, everyone. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't quite there. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, is anyone working on any interesting game things by, by themselves? Um, any sort of any any pictures? Because Jay, were you working on a on like getting some of your games ready for the AEG pitch thing? I can't remember. Um, yeah, I can't remember. I haven't really been catching up with anybody else's streams either. Sadly, I've missed Bears and Michael's streams the last few days. Um, yes, yes, card language is important. No, I I really. <laughs> It, it, it's funny, like sometimes you sit down, and like I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this thing, and then you realize actually, no, I, had, I needed to work on that thing first. Yeah, especially this because it's a, you know, it's a variable power sort of card game. All the cards work together in different ways, and making sure you have like consistency in that. I mean, you need consistency anyway for the clarity of the game, but also if you don't have consistency, it's very hard to describe it in a, you know, in a coherent way in the rules. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I keep right, pushing right in the rules. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to do this because I actually pitched the game to a publisher before I had written the rules. Uh, so I, I need to write the rules so I, check, so I can actually send the prototype. Um, but I think that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be a weekend a weekend job, I think, uh, something like that. Um, oh, I've really, <laughs> I've just, I, I, I was kind of prepared for this thing and now I don't, I don't quite know what I'm going to be doing. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Rob saving me with some interesting chat. Okay, I'm an interesting place with the in an interesting place uh, with the village on the river, which is getting solid and fun, grad gradually hunting down the gross imbalances, but are having a tough time finding a killer pitch for it. So this is your roll and write game, right? With the kind of like I, I haven't actually played it, but there's like a grid of like four by four, right? And there's some other lots of other stuff, but you're kind of drawing this village in that four by four grid. Um, Rob saying it might be the game is not distinctive enough. Yeah, I mean, without without knowing the game, um, yeah, it's true. It's interesting. I um, Seth Jaffe this week posted something on Twitter, which I think was just basically like, "Let's have a chat," or I like, "I've got some spare time. Let's have a chat." And one thing I I told him or asked him was like, "How does starting a new design has that changed that feeling or that process or what you think about?" How's that changed for you now versus like five or ten years ago? And I was kind of getting at this this feeling, at least for me, that um, when I start new designs now, I, I'm just like more and more conscious of the fact that, um, yeah, like that it's harder to stand out. There's there's like so many games being released all the time, and like you know, it's sort of interesting. It it it, it stops sometimes stop me even work, starting work an idea because I quickly go through in my head or sort of go like in the best instance of what this game is is it that exceptional is it that interesting you know like can i see it and it's funny because it's even gone past the point of like do i think i could sell it to a publisher because i think in some ways um it, it, it's an interesting thing right now like because there are so many games being published and there are so many publishers um i don't know yes it's always hard getting a game signed but there's lots of people you can talk to, lots of, uh, there's lots of chances. But the thing I think that's a lot harder to, to pin down is like, is this game going to make much of a difference if it exists? You know, like if a publisher does a good job with it, like, is it really going, is it worth all that time? And it's interesting to think about that very, very end point right at the start. Um, I'm not so sure if it's a very useful thing. Um, it's more just for like what's on my mind uh, at the moment, I would say uh you know with these things and it just sort of yeah it makes me wonder about what i what i actually start on and what i continue with and where i put my effort um so yeah and there was an interesting a bit of a discussion on twitter there was a bit of a thread someone else had written a board game blog post or something about it um you know about like how do you consider yourself to be you know how do you make like interesting creative things how do you feel like you're different from other people and um yeah, it's 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 an interesting thing to to deal with, and yeah, when you have a game that um, that that's working well, but it just like is it going to stand out? And, and it was interesting, I think, also why maybe I stopped walking on, on the continents game here on on, on the channel on on um, on the stream because I felt that even if it got to its final point, I was sort of like, oh, but it's just going to be another you know kind of map 
building roll and write and like cartographers already exist you know i'm not saying that like there can't be any more you know it, it's but unless you can really see this clear thing that's going to like push it apart from other games and and beyond hopefully and 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 find its audience then it's um you know you wonder why you you, you keep putting effort into it uh rob said i think we would probably be content if this game just ends up as a print play but it was nice but it would be nice to try to get it published if it fits with some publisher yeah i think and i think roller rights in a way there's you know because there's just less of a financial kind of risk and outlay um for these sort of things um you know i i think there are yeah like there's more opportunities to to get games published even if they aren't like absolutely because i think if you can combine it with like a nice theme a nice art and things like that i think there's there's a lot of opportunities there and but yeah i agree it's it, it, it's it's tricky I, and it's not just for obviously for roller rights and the nice thing about and that's why i i keep thinking with these roller rights is i would love to it's sort of funny because you sort of think that the the, the, the how do you make them distinctive and 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 are there that many out there already but you also realize there is there doesn't seem actually a real audience for even people who are looking for that they really love roll rights um you know they love quirky you know twists on the formula and then you think like well is there a way to kind of yeah do it print and play um is there a way to make even some money from that possibly you know um, like the good little games and the patreon and things like that it's definitely something i i keep thinking about as well whether uh i i i haven't been ever able to crack it and and i don't know what to do but you know to to revisit the kind of patreon model for for, for a game designer for a tabletop game designer um which i think is also quite interesting possibly but yeah i i i'm not sure i'm not sure how how it all might how it all might go um yeah uh. On a side note, I also uh, introduced Teresi to uh, Parks and Recreation uh, last night. I'm not sure if she completely saw why it's funny, but I quite, <laughs> I quite enjoy it. It was nice to. I've never really watched it, so I, you know, it's nice to kind of watch things off a little bit more. Uh, Rob said, "So one thing that the games runs off is a 40, 54 custom card deck, uh, but there is massive potential for adding uh, switching cards. To that. Could that be some special source?" Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, that changes the nature of what that game is, right? It's not just a pad. It's you know, it's like one a single deck of cards. Um, yeah, I, I, I it could be I, for a while actually. You know, I Brett and I were trying to make a series of games which were like fifty four cards plus one die or one or two dice to have like a kind of a roll on right with a card deck. You know, these kind of uh, things. Um, yeah, I mean, having like rolls and having variable card play, uh, like powers, and I don't know how the cards would affect the game. That that can be a big thing, and um, I know that that might allow you to have a kind of like a meatier, more strategic experience. There's definitely not that many roll and rights that I would say are that rep uh, like variable. They're like they're replayable, but they give you a similar experience. Like like I probably wouldn't play Welcome Two as much as I do. I mean, I haven't played for a little while, but like them constantly making new maps and things like that is what makes it and cartographers obviously has the the variable cards kind of baked into it um so yeah i don't know i don't know exactly how the cards are being used in the game but that, that yeah that could be something that that pushes it apart um of course you know like it does change the the pitch of the game obviously like and, and kind of be kind of as cheap and easy as as you'd hope but um yeah i, I don't see why not i think that that, that sounds cool yeah definitely Go for it, Rob. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Mm. No, but anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure. I'm actually, to be honest, may maybe today it might might actually be a bit of a short and short and sharp short and sharp stream uh, because. I now realize I have to do some other work, um, which is not very stream. It's like, I have to really like think, and I don't think I can stream at the same time. So I might, I might just do, maybe I'll just actually do a half an hour stream today. Just something a bit, a bit short and sharp and sweet. Um, and, and let you all get back to the rest of your lives or something like that. Um, because, uh, yeah, I think I have, yeah, it's sort of weird. <laughs> I, I I thought I had it planned out in my head, but uh, I, did, I didn't quite have it have it there, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and I realise I am still. I think yeah, I shouldn't push myself too much. I think I 
realizing that I um yeah, still still take it easy after recovering from, from COVID, I think is, is not a bad idea. No, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, furniture polishing. Oh, excellent, excellent. You're making your own furniture or something like that? Uh, very cool. Uh Jay asks, do you usually wait with writing down the rules? Yes. <laughs> I don't I don't enjoy it particularly. I mean, I don't I think once I get into it, I don't really mind it that much. Um, but I don't ever think to do it early. And I sh I probably should. It's um it's a bad habit. But yeah, I will normally write rules simply when we're about to go to a trade fair and we're about to pitch the game to a lot of people. Right now, you don't have that. So I'm kind of pitching games without writing the rules necessarily, uh, even though everything's kind of set. And yeah, in this instance, now I have to write the rules. Um, but yeah, I need to get a bit uh, get a bit better at that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't wait uh, as long as I do. I don't think it makes so much sense at the very early stage when things are changing so much. You know, it, it makes more sense. And, and if you can hold it in your head and you're forgetting things, but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. It, it I think for, for me, there are definitely a few games that go too too long that uh, that don't um, that I don't write the rules early enough. <laughs> uh, Rob said we brought some dining chairs, but they came as just natural wood, so we're actually impulsing themselves. Oh, okay, nearly done that. Oh, fantastic. Well, I hope I hope you all get to enjoy them soon. Uh, your new furniture. Um, yeah, I I always. I, I don't know if anyone knows this sort of feeling. It's nothing to do with game design, but I, I have yet to live somewhere where I really feel like I'm going to be somewhere permanent. So, like, I don't really buy furniture. Like, I, I buy a couple of things. Like, I bought this chair, you know, a few years ago or, or, like, a bookcase or something. But it's just sort of a weird feeling that I've never felt, or at least for a very long time, I haven't lived since I, since I left my parents' house, which was, like, y you know, I don't know, 15 years ago or something. Um, I've never really felt like I have a permanent home. So, you know, you don't really feel like working on it and like renovating or getting furniture. I mean, we don't own it. Like we rent this place, obviously. So that's also part of it. But it's like, I don't even know what country I'm going to end up in, you know? So it's sort of a weird sort of like uh, wandering. It's not, it's not uncomfortable, but I, I sometimes like, oh, you know, you see these people with these amazing like st offices or something. Like I'd love to have like a, a really great work room. I think I definitely, that's one thing I'm really noticing I need help me kind of focus like and delineate like if i'm working from home all the time i need like the workroom and a non-work space you know to, to try and help that kind of delineation but uh yeah no i think so it was uh, yeah it's a it's it's a it, it's not so bad i mean life's fine but uh yeah little little things okay well maybe let's let's leave it but uh, also because it's you, know, you should all go and enjoy your the public the rest of the public holiday i hope everyone has a fantastic easter if, if you celebrate Easter. Uh, we have um, Teresa's grandmother gave us a baranek, which is the traditional Czech Easter baked. Uh, it's 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 a it's a cake basically in the shape of a lamb. So you know the kind of the, you know spring connotations. Um, so she baked it because everyone has their own like it's it's a very uh, it's like a standard shape and people buy tins cake tins in that mold and and she made us one. So it's uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Hi Aqua, nice to see you. Yeah, you. you you're good. You you just caught me. I, I think uh, today's going to be a bit of a short stream because I realized I well, I was all ready to write some rules, and then I realized that I hadn't um, <laughs> I hadn't um, fixed something else with the game, which I need to do before I write the rules. Otherwise, they're not going to make any sense. So yeah, don't worry about catching up. This was a bit of a this was a bit of a meandering stream, um, but yes. Uh, but I hope it, yeah. Hope everyone has a great weekend, and uh, yeah, I'll be back on Monday. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll try and have a think about what I what I want to be doing. Um, yeah, and and we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah, so that might do it. Have have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll catch you all on Monday. All right. Thanks very much. <laughs>